Good morning, everybody. So today we are going to talk about custom exceptions in PHP and how we can utilize them in our Laravel application to uh, make the most out of them. So let's get started. So as you may or may not know, in our app application, there is a folder called exceptions. Inside of this folder, we can create a new class and just call it custom exception. And we could even, you know, make this, maybe let's not make it abstract. And this class should basically extend uh, the base exception that PHP provides. And that's the first thing that we need to do. Now, I have an app running. The app will be using uh, Postman to connect to it. So I will just query API slash test, which doesn't exist. So let's create this route. Well, let me just create a test controller and in our api.php let's do route get test and let's connect it to our test controller all right uh, so inside of here let's create an invocable function and here we'll just return response json and then pass the message so let's query it again and we can see that it is working but now let's say, you know, something happens and uh, here, you know, we could be calling an external service. To make it simple, I will just call a function on this controller, which is not something that I recommend. But I will just do, you know, this, make something risky. And let us implement this method. Uh, it should be protected. And inside of here, we'll just show a new exception. So now if we query that endpoint, so we'll see this exception, but only because we are in debug mode. So let me actually disable that mode. So let's go to our env file, and here let's turn the debug to false, and let's query that endpoint again. And here we can see that we just got a 500 with a server error. Makes sense, right? Because Laravel doesn't know what type of error this is, and you know, it could be something really bad. So naturally, the way we could uh, handle this is we could add a try catch here. We could capture the exception. Uh, let's call it E. And here, you know, we could return response JSON uh, message. You know, could be an error occurred, and we could pass a five hundred. Uh, now PHP Storm is complaining that this is an unreachable statement, but this is because they know that we'll draw the exception. Uh, so let me rerun this, and we can see that the error message was changed. We can also, you know, easily manipulate the status. Now there is a better way to do it. So basically, uh, instead of throwing an exception, we could create a, we could throw the custom exception, or better yet, we could create a, an exception that's you know, directly connected to this file. So for example, test exception. And this test exception would obviously extend from the custom exception. Okay, so now we could throw a new test exception. And let me rerun this, and it obviously still works. But because now we know that this is a first party exception, what we can do is instead of doing catch exception, which we still can leave here, but for this example, we know that nothing else will be thrown, we could do catch test exception, and now just get the error message from that exception, because we know that whatever is provided there is not sensitive. If you rerun this, we can see the actual message passed from the exception. Now, what's really cool about this is now we could create a set of helpers that would allow us to create those exceptions in multiple places if they are, you know, if they can be thrown in multiple places. So let me show you an example. In our test exception, we can create a new public static function called uh, oopsie daisy because that's an error in the domain of our application, and the other one can be, uh, you know. I know, site is down. So here we could uh, simply return new self, 
and we can just pass the custom message. So for example, oopsie daisy or site is down, uh, you know, try again later. And both of these would obviously return the test exception. Now in our test controller, we could easily, instead of doing that, we could just show test exception, oopsie daisy. And this reads really good because now you have this like one centralized place where you store all of the exception messages. And what's really nice is you can associate an HTTP code with them right here. So our oopsie daisy can be a 403, but site is down could be a 500. So now we could even extend it and do exception get code. Let us rerun this again. We can see our oopsie daisy with a 403 right here. And instead of this, uh, you know, we can do site is down, which is the weirdest error message ever. And we can see that the error, that the message is different and so is the status. However, this is kind of annoying, uh, honestly, like doing this in the entire app. Oh my God. I wonder if there is a better way to handle this. And luckily in Laravel there is. So here in this exception folder, we have something called handler. And what's really cool about handler is that we can register a custom behavior for an exception. So the way you could do it is we could uh, remove this altogether and do something like this, renderable, then pass in the function that contains the exception name. So in our case, it would be the base class, so custom exception. And then the second parameter is the request. And what we can do now is we can simply return response JSON message uh, e get message. And here we could do e get code. So now when we comment out all of this and run our postman again, we can see that we still got this exception, but there is no code in our there is no code in our controller. We can remove this altogether. This way we are sure that our custom exceptions are always shown to the customer. And if we ever need to do something because an exception was thrown, we can still do the catchway, the, the try catch. So now you need to add a try catch in your controller only under two conditions. If you think the underlying method will either throw the base exception or a custom exception that's you know not in the scope of your application, or will throw the base exception because, you know, something bad happens. Uh, what's also really cool about it is that by using inheritance, you can also create like a general badly exception. Uh, so we can create public static function here called, uh, you know, internal exception, return new static, and internal exception occurred. And you could also throw from here if you want to. I just prefer it this way, by the way. Uh, and, you know, now we can just do test exception, internal exception. So any reusable exceptions that would happen in your application could be stored here and then easily referenced in custom exceptions. So let me just try this again. And as we can see, oops. We need to be sure to provide an error code here. So yeah, that's all I have to say about custom exceptions. They're a great way of passing information between services and controllers, uh, which I have already talked about in the past. So if you enjoyed it, please give me a like and subscribe down below. See you next time. Bye.